Hey guys, before we get started, I wanted to tell you about all of the cool courses I've worked on over the last year or so. I've done a complete Unity 101 course for complete beginners. I've also covered how to create various RPG systems like inventory and crafting, questing, and turn-based battling. And we also recreate some cool classic games such as Mario Bros and Missile Command. If any of this sounds like fun to you, find the links in the description below and be sure to use the coupon code AG39QZ to say 15% on any course you purchase. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the problem that we are going to try to solve, and then we'll get into the solution, or at least a solution, for that problem. So what I'm gonna do is roll around my little game here, and I'm gonna collect these items that I have lying about. And it's gonna add these items to an inventory list that I'm displaying in the UI here, and it's gonna destroy the world item of that object after it adds it to my inventory. And what I wanna be able to do is save my inventory list, and then whenever I load the game again later, I will have the same items. Very straightforward, it would seem, but also a huge requirement for any kind of game, right? Saving progress. But there's a bunch of different types of stuff that we have to save to actually save the progress for our player. You just think about, oh, the position of the player, or the, the level of the player, the lives the player has left. But then you have to think about progression things like stats, unlocked areas, discovered recipes, whatever you have like that. And these are all just lists of things, right? Pretty straightforward. But then I also think about, well, this item was just collected from my world and added to my player's inventory. If I save my player's inventory and I come back in here, look, I have all four of my items, but these items will still be in the game world. So we have to have a way to save the state of those items in the game world so they do not get spawned in if I have already collected them. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to keep a collection based on a unique ID for every item in our game world. And at the start of each scene, we're going to check to see, has this item been collected? If it has, do not let it instantiate. Do not let it spawn. Or if it is spawned, destroy it. Whatever we have to do. But if it hasn't been collected, then let it come in the game as you would expect. Let the player collect it and then add it to that collection so that we know next time. And then all we have to do is save that single collection and load that single collection. And all of our scenes will have non-collected items be available and already collected items be unavailable. Now, obviously, this is a huge requirement for an RPG with loot or for just any game with collectibles, but this will also teach you how to save a lot of different types of data because the serializer that we're going to use doesn't really care what it is. It's very good at serializing anything as long as it is serializable. Pretty straightforward. That has pumped my mic. Pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get into this so we can see what we have to do. Now, I already have a bit of a game here, but the stuff that I already have doesn't really matter. I have a ball I can roll around in my little scene. I have a portal system. I have collectible items and a basic inventory system with some events in between. So I have, if I collect an item, I update uh, the UI through an action, an event. Very basic stuff there, but it's also not important for this. Just want you to understand where we are. Now, this project is available link in the description below if you want to go ahead and grab this project and follow along or at least have the same base that will be great so what i want to do first of all is i want to just go ahead and start creating our save system now this save system is something that is available it has been available for a while now on my github page but it's just something that i made looks like a year ago and was planning on doing a lesson on this exact thing then, but work got in the way big time, and that's where I've been. Uh, if you've if you've been wondering, the the first thirty seconds of this video probably gave you a hint to that. But it's all here, and what I'm going to teach you is not how to use it, but also how to make it, or not just how to use it, but also how to make it. So what I'm going to do then is we're going to write that on our own here. I'm going to go to save load. I have a folder here. I'm going to create a new C sharp script. And we'll call it save load. Name yours whatever you'd like. I could not come up with a name that made sense for saving and loading for in, in my instance. So this is where I'm at. And I want to show you really quick the unique ID. All this does 
is just creates a string with some properties that would be something that would make it easy to identify this item. So the position square magnitude, which unless you have the same coordinates or like one zero and zero one, uh, then they're not going to be the same. But if that's the case, then we also have a name tacked onto that. And then we also get the uh, sibling index just because it's another value. Uh, but we could do scene index maybe. So this one's specific to this scene, that one's specific to that scene, uh, whatever you want to do. That's what we do there. And then our collectible item set is just uh, a hash set, a string hash set. And the reason we're using hash set is because all we care about is whether an item exists in that set or not, in that collection or not. And a hash set is the best way to do that because it doesn't care about anything else other than does it exist and can I get a reference to it if it does exist. Okay, so in our save load class, we're going to start writing the actual system to save and load our data. Get rid of these default methods. And I'm going to create a static system so we can access it with just a simple class reference. So we're just going to have public static void. It's going to return nothing because this is going to be the save method. We're going to use a generic method for this. In fact, the entire system is going to be generic. So that means we have to take in a type of T so we can define the type whenever we call it. That way it'll know, oh, I'm working with this type. So we can save uh, any type of object that is serializable by just saying this is an item or this is a tooltip or whatever you want to say. Those are all valid as long as they can be serialized. And then the first parameter we're going to take is going to be of that type because it's going to be the object we want to save. So object to save. And the second parameter will just be a key. You could reverse these if you want, but I like to have my key after the actual object I'm saving for absolutely no reason. So now let's construct our path. It's simply going to be the application persistent data path, which is going to be a folder or directory on any of the platforms that we can build for that will allow us to store files persistently between game load. We're going to take that persistent data path and we're going to add to it just the folder that we're going to create. I'm just going to call it saves. Now inside of this is where we're going to have our save files. But for now, all I care about is this path. And what I want to do, we're going to work with files and directories now. So let's go ahead and grab that namespace, system.io input output allows us to do directories and file work, which we have to do. Let's first of all, create a new directory if it doesn't exist. If it does exist, this won't do anything. I want to create that directory at that path so we have that saves folder. And now what I want to do is I'm going to create that binary formatter that we're going to use to serialize our data. Now there is a ton of different serializers we can use for this. We can serialize it to XML or JSON, JSON being my favorite. And those are more human readable formats that we could actually serialize to view it in a text file, make edits in the text file. Then whenever I load the game in again, we will have those changes made. So we can actually edit the game values without editing the actual game itself, which is pretty cool and really the strength of something like JSON. But in our case, we're going to be using binary, which is not human readable. It's a bit more difficult to tinker with, which is also a good thing if you don't want people to tinker with your values and your data. In my case, I like that, so I like to use JSON, but I understand making it a little more difficult may be best. <laughs> So what we're going to do is create a binary formatter. And the way we have to do that, in fact, is we have to go through the serialization namespace. So we're going to say using system.runtime.serialization and also using system.runtime.serialization.formatter. And the one we're looking for is binary. A lot going on there, but this makes it a bit easier for us to handle all of this. So I'm going to create a binary formatter. And I'm just going to call it formatter and we're going to construct a new binary formatter. Nothing fancy going on there. And now our formatter is going to take whatever object we're trying to save, and it's going to serialize or deserialize it into binary or into whatever object we're trying to get back. But we also have to have a file stream that we can take that formatted data and use it to write it to a file or read it from a file or whatever we have to do. So we're going to create a file stream to do that. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. The easiest being using a using statement, which is simply just using 
resource. Now, the reason you want to use this is because once you are done using the file stream or really any stream or any resource in general, you have to dispose of it. You have to say, I am done with this. I no longer need this to be open. I want you to close it and I want you to dispose of it and release it from memory. What I want to do is inside my using statement, I'll say use a file stream and I'll just call it file stream and let's create a new file stream. Now this is a resource declaration that we've made inside the using statement, but that's completely fine. That's how we're supposed to do it because now this knows, okay, well everything inside of my block within my scope, once I am done with that, I will take this resource that they declared for me and I will dispose of it. But until then I will use it for the things that are defined within my scope. So what I will then do is take formatter and serialize data to that file stream. But clearly we have to fill out some stuff for file stream first. So file stream needs a path. Where is the stream? Where is the file? We need a path. And I also want to pass in the key for that. So the name of the file that we're looking for. So we go to persistent data path slash saves slash name of file. And then we have to have that file extension, which in my case, simply going to be a text file. You could do whatever you wanted to here but I want to use a text file. And then we have to give a file mode. All you want to do is simply create the file. Just keep it very simple and say file mode dot create. Now, if I zoom out here to get just another look at what's going on, this is what we have. So then all I have to do is take that file stream. If I look at the serializer here, it's looking for a stream that it's going to serialize this data to, then also the object that it's going to serialize. So the stream I want to use is file stream, the one we just created. And then the object I want to save. Now this says object graph. So the cool thing about the binary formatter, about formatting things in binary, serializing uh, objects to binary, is that it doesn't just serialize the object you passed in. It will serialize the entire graph of that object, as long as it can. So what you do is you pass in the root object, the root of the graph, say this object, but then this object inherits from this object, which uh, implements this interface, which does all this cool stuff. It can just keep going down the graph until it finds the endpoint, which is exactly what we want to do. You can save an entire game object in that way. As long as you serialize the data properly, you can save the entire state of it, which is pretty cool. So I want to take the object we want to save and pass that in as the second parameter. And that's all we have to do to save. Now we have to load. So what I'm going to do to make this a little more easy for us, a little easier, is just take that, copy and paste it. Now I'm going to change this to load. The return type is going to be the type of object that we are trying to save or trying to load, in fact. And we do not need the object itself. We just need the key. We just need to know what file we're looking for. We want the same path. Uh, the directory, we do not care about creating it. We want the same formatter to be created, or at least an instance of the formatter to be created. We're going to use the file stream the same way, so all this makes sense. But I want to change the file mode from create to open. I want to open an existing file to read the data that file has. And what I want to do for this is I want to create a variable of type, whatever type this is. So whatever type I defined whenever I called this, the generic type. I want to create a variable called return value. And what I'm going to do is set this to be the default value of that type. And in fact, I can explicitly say of whatever generic type that we're looking at here. And the reason that is, is because if we do not find a file that has data in it for this load, then just give them the default for that type. So if it was an int, give them zero. If it was a string, give them a null. If it's a float, give them a zero. And there's just all kinds of different default types like that that we could talk about. But we want to make sure that if we do not find that, then give them the default value. But if we do find the value, we want to give them that value. So what I'll do is I'll say return value inside of our using statement here is equal to formatter. Then I simply want to deserialize. Now I'm taking already serialized data and I'm deserializing it back into whatever object it was before. And all we have to do for this is take in the file stream because that has the path and the name and the mode that we're opening with and all that fun stuff. But what this is going to do now is say we cannot convert object to type T. So this returns just an object, which is good. That means it can return pretty much anything, but it's not nearly as type safe 
and you're going you can run into more errors more issues if you rely on object in place of a generic so what i want to do here is just cast this to whatever type that we're loading just like that so it'll just say oh the return value is of type t as well now whatever we deserialize we will construct it into that type and we will set it to be equal to or set return value to be equal to that result so now return value if i'm loading a list of items will be a list of items and this will be a null list then all i have to do is once i'm done return the return value if it found that file with save data it'll be whatever we're looking for if it did not it'll be the default of that value type now there's one more thing or at least two more things i can think of that we're going to need for this the first thing we want to be able to check if a save already exists for an object or for a key so that we can see uh, do i have an inventory to load does it exist should i try to load it that way we don't run into errors of of trying to load a file that doesn't exist so i'll create a public static it's going to return a boolean so bool i'm going to call it save exists and this method is going to take in is going to be a key and all we're going to do is we're going to again take that path we'll take the path construct it once again here but this time i'll just throw on the rest of this we could probably just create a formatted string for this but this will be okay for now dot text that's the entire file that i'm looking for with the path on it as well so what i can do then is return the result of file dot exists which is going to be true if the file I'm looking for exists and false if it does not at whatever path i pass in so if that exists we know hey i'll try to load that file if it doesn't exist then i'm not going to load that file and the last thing i want for the save system itself another static void this time and this is going to be a way to delete all save progress, which is not something you want to be careless with, but for the testing, it's fine. I'm just going to do a seriously delete all save files. And again, we'll just do the path. Now, this could be a constant somewhere because this is not going to change. Uh, I don't have that set up for this to work like that, but you could do that if you wanted to. It'd be, be pretty simple to do. What I want to do is convert that path to a directory or to a directory info object directory info i'll call it directory create a new directory info object this is going to give us the ability to simply delete the directory itself and the reason we want to do that is we could delete each individual file recursively we'll go through and say how many files do we have oh there's one deleted oh there's one deleted but what i would instead like to do is just delete the entire directory that these save files are in and then create the directory again. Now, you wouldn't want to do this if you were if you had an actual game where you had multiple character save files, you would want to delete the entire character directory instead of the entire save directory. So keep that in mind if you wanted to do something like that. But in this case, it'll work just fine. So directory.delete, there we go. And then just create that directory once again. Create directory at that path. And there we go. So that is our save system ready to go. So all we have to do now is start using it. And there's a lot we could do with this. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to save our inventory list. 